What do I call you? Doctor or therapist? Doctor is fine. Alright, therapist. I'm so stressed out. I got my comedy festival show tonight and I only had six weeks to write and do this thing. I haven't had time to rehearse it. Like, you usually get like seven, eight months to do it. Like, I also got to get my hair cut. Look at this. How am I supposed to perform looking like this? And this COVID thing's pissed me off as well. Like, I had this guy look at me weird. I was like, what are you looking at? There's been cockroaches all over my place. Found a Pokemon is real. Every day is getting harder and harder. I have a suggestion. Oh yeah? What's that? Have you thought of trying to stay positive? Fuck you. Ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing tonight? Let's get applause going. Do it tonight. Good? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, let me fucking start the show for you guys. Let's see what's up, what's up, what's up. Oh, okay, calm the music down, calm down, calm down. Guys, I'm doing art up here, okay? This is art, all right? So calm the fuck down and let me do my art because art, for me, this is the only time I get to express myself. The only time I get to express myself, connect with people. And most importantly, there's not a single fucking refund available, okay? So if you don't like this, it's too bad, there's no refunds. But I gotta admit, my favorite part of comedy is the entrance music. I love that entrance music. But what I love about it is because like wrestling is what I love. And this is the only time I feel like a wrestler when the music comes out, right? And I feel like it's energetic because when a wrestler comes out, you get a whole persona. You get fucking attitude when you hear their music and they come out. Like one of the most famous wrestlers in the world, The Rock. Right? When you hear, if you smell what The Rock is cooking, you know attitude's coming out. You know he's gonna kick someone's ass. It feels great. And that was my entrance music, which was Insane Clown Posse, which means we're all gonna have a terrible time. Right? <laughs> but like, that's why I should never be a wrestler. Because a wrestler's music captures their persona. And if I was a wrestler, my persona, <laughs> no. My persona is a scared 15 year old girl that got braces before the big dance, you know? <laughs> Can you imagine? Be like, Ladies and gentlemen, coming from unknown parts of Bankstown and weighing in on conversations you never asked him to be a part of. Please welcome Seizure Kaiser. And then I come out and the smoke machines go off and all these pyro going off and you hear, so baby, you're a firework. Like, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. 
I, but like, I, it's kind of weird because I do have kind of a wrestler's name, like Seizure Kaiser. Seizure as in uh, and Kaiser as in King. You know, I have a wrestler's name. And I, well, wish, I always want to be a wrestler. And like, the, one of my favorite wrestlers, a guy called Triple H, he comes out, he comes out and he just spits water into the air and it looks epic. But all he does is literally take a sip of water and go, Pfft. That's it. Like, I'll show you. It's fucking easy. Like, you just do this. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. But I always wanted to be a wrestler. And you know what's funny? There's a wrestling show next door. If I knew that, I'll cancel this, right? Because I want to watch that. But yeah, like, I always want to be a wrestler. And I, like, I, like, one day, I still dream to be a wrestler. But my therapist says I'm very delusional. I've got to calm down. Um, yeah, I've been seeing a therapist. I've been seeing a therapist. And who said woo? Why, why, why? Do you see a therapist as well? Yeah, I do. Yeah, you look crazy. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like, and my therapist is telling me I've got to stay positive because I'm a very blasé with my negativity. And what that means is like, for example, tonight I wanted to get hit by a bus before the show because I didn't want to do it. Right? But not because I want to die. I just don't want to do the show. Because right? let me explain. Usually with a comedy festival show, you find out in November if you got uh, accepted, then you've got all that time to write it. And then you, got, you can prepare it, you can you know, test it all out. But I only found out how to show a month and a half ago because of COVID. But like, I do have to stay positive. My, my, my therapist is saying, you have to stay positive. Be positive, be positive, be positive. And I've been trying to, because I had a lot of things, because like, I hate taking Ubers. Does anyone like taking Ubers here? No? Yeah. no? Who's that? Yes. Why do you like taking Ubers? Huh? Why do you like taking Ubers? Next to my house. Next to your house? That... The house next to my house. Moving on. Uh... <laughs> No, I hate taking Ubers, because I don't know if you have the same experience I do, right? Because when I take an Uber, every driver wants to talk religion with me. Every driver. I'm not sure what it is about me. I can't quite tell what it is that every driver wants to... It's because I'm an Arab, right? Every time I get into an Uber, it's the same conversation. It's like, hello, brother, how are you? I'm like, yeah, I'm all right. Did you just finish work? No, I was hanging out with my mates. Then they always ask me this. So, uh, do you read the Quran? I'm like, fuck. Here we go. Now, full disclosure, I grew up Muslim, but I'm an atheist. I'm an atheist now, but I still pray. I pray for a white driver. Because <laughs> the conversation is so much different. I'll get into an Uber with a white driver. It's like, how you doing? Good. Finger anyone tonight? No, here's Triple A. Boom. Right? And that's why I can't wait for the driverless car, because I don't want to speak to drivers. The driverless car will be so good. I'll get into a driverless car, and it has one of those voice automated systems. It'll be like, hello, Seizure, how are you? Like, I'm doing well. How are you doing, driverless car? It's like, I'm doing okay. Before we continue, point out the traffic lights to prove you're not a robot. There's one there, there's one there. Ha ha, that's a joke. It's coming after my job. <laughs> Then it has one of those facial recognition systems and it'll scan me up and down. It's like, Brrr. so by your skin color, do you read the Quran? Fuck. <laughs> Can't escape it. And I hate all those facial recognition systems. I hate them all. Right? Because I don't know if you've been to a Woolworth self-serve checkout recently, but now all their screens have a little camera right at the top pointing at your face. And in the top right corner, there's a video of scanning items. Why? Who's that for? Every item I'm going to scan is just going to be a brown onion anyway. It's going to be a brown onion, brown onion, brown onion, brown onion, right? I'm like, who's watching these cameras? That's creepy. Is there someone going watching all the cameras going, oh, the guy number six is pretty fast. We should hire him. <laughs> no. That, that, that's very creepy. Imagine if I walked up to a checkout person, pulled out my phone and just started recording them. That's creepy, right? They're like, sir, what are you doing? I'm like, don't worry, this is for quality and training purposes. Keep going. <laughs> Creepy. But I got into an Uber the other night and same conversation. Hello, brother, how are you? I'm like, yeah, I'm doing alright. Did you just finish work? So I'm hanging out with my mates. Then he asked me something different, something I wasn't expecting. He goes, So, you see what happened to Trump today? I'm like, Trump? No, what happened? And we started talking politics, we started talking about the news, we started talking about history. He goes, Oh, brother, you know your history very well. I'm like, Yeah, I know my history very well. I spent like that. <laughs> Yeah, I know my history very well. He goes, okay. So you know in the Quran how it says, I'm like, fuck. That is not history. I said oh. it again. <laughs> That's never happened. <laughs> yeah. 
That is not history. He goes, what do you mean? I'm like, that's, that's religion. That's like a graphic novel without graphics. It's not real. And just like most of you, he was silent. And then his tone went way lower. He was like, what do you mean, brother? I was like, fuck. I gotta get out of this. I don't want to ruin this guy's night. He shouldn't have to ruin mine by talking about fucking religion. So I thought I had to come up with a plan. And I looked over and I was like, drop me off right here. Right here, but you have a long way to go. I'm like, yeah, yeah, just drop me off right here. Because you sure? I'm like, yeah. And then he asked me why. I said, because that's my car over there. My Uber shift starts in about two minutes. So I'd really appreciate that. <laughs> and let me go, don't worry, I still gave the Quran five stars. So it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> But yeah, I gotta stay positive. And it's so hard, because I'm getting older. I'm getting older, and it's hard to stay positive when you're older. Because like, things were more exciting in my 20s. Everything in my 20s was so cool. Now I'm in my 30s, the magic's gone. Like I remember when I was in my 20s, I'd be like, oh, have you guys heard the latest track by DJ whatever? It's fucking sick, it's heavy, it's loud. It, you gotta listen to it, bro. Now that I'm in my 30s, I'm like, I got this brand new dryer. It doesn't make a sound, it's really nice. You should get one. <laughs> In my 20s, I was like, oh, I got this video game. The graphics are slick, man. You gotta check it out. It only cost me 120 bucks. Now that I'm in my 30s, I'm like, I got these really nice blue plates from Kmart. They're very good. They're very slick. They're only $3. You should get one. <laughs> like in my 20s, I'd be like, oh, I made out with three people tonight. Oh, I'm fucking a legend. Now that I'm in my 30s, I'm like, I found a girl that I put up with my shit. So she said yes, you know? <laughs> Completely different. But yeah, it's like. <laughs> get the fuck out. <laughs> But no, like, like, I remember, like, it's hard to, like, keep up the trends. I remember when I was a kid, I loved playing video games. Love playing video games. They were so much fun. I, I played them every day, every night. That's why I failed school and became a comedian. But, you know, I love doing it. I love playing games as a kid. But now the latest trend with kids is not playing games. They watch other people play games. It's weird. I don't get it. And I figured it out. It's because we've over-medicated these kids. <laughs> They can't experience joy unless they see someone else having joy, you know, and they can't relate. And I think that's why we have a big cuckolding problem in society. A lot of guys can't enjoy fucking their wives. They have to see someone else fuck their wives. And if anyone in the audience suffers from that, please call me at 0414. I'll come fuck your wife, all right? I'll help, I'll help. I think I got the wrong audience. <laughs> Gotta stay positive, gotta stay positive. I'm getting into a darker place. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> but like a tip someone gave me is like, maybe try smiling more. Try smiling more, you know? Cause that makes you in a better mood. Yeah, that kind of does, but I'm not a natural smiler. This is my happy face, <laughs> all right? This is when I'm at peace. But like, I remember my friend was telling me how to pick up girls. He's like, uh, if you see a girl looking at you, smile at her, and if she smiles back, go up and have a conversation. So I thought, okay, I'll give that a shot. And I was on the train and this girl was looking at me. So I smiled at her and she freaked down and left. <laughs> Cause I'm not a natural smiler, right? And then I just want to call my reflection in the window. I'm like, oh fuck, I look like a serial killer. <laughs> Can't smile naturally, right? I'm not a big fan of advertising. I fucking hate it. Like I saw this billboard the other day. It said the new iPhone is here. I'm like, yeah, I know. You don't have to advertise that to me, Apple. I know the new iPhone is here because my one's not working anymore. <laughs> I saw this other ad that Apple had that said, Apple, we care about privacy. Makes you feel safe, doesn't it? Right? Because they got the word care and privacy. You feel safe. But they don't put the word your in there. <laughs> they don't give a fuck about your privacy. Have you tried opening an iPhone? It's like, hey, I Apple, I just want to see behind the screen. No. But come on, can I have a, just a tiny little look? No, don't do that or you'll suffer the consequences. Oh yeah, what are you gonna do? That's it, we're putting you two on all your devices, right? <laughs> they, don't, they don't care about your privacy, but that's how they trick you. And they use modern advertising that is all created by this guy called Edward Bernays. Edward Bernays was a, the godfather of PR marketing. In the 1920s, Lucky Strike cigarettes were like, hey, we need to sell cigarettes to women because it's a bit of a taboo thing still. How can we do it? And they asked Edward Bernays. So what he did, he put on a women's march for independence and women's rights. But then he handed out Lucky Strike cigarettes to everyone marching and they were smoking in the march. And you know what happened? Lucky Strike cigarettes sales went through the roof. 
They just went through the roof. Everyone started buying cigarettes. That's kind of sinister though. Putting on a women's march to sell cigarettes. Like they didn't give a fuck about the women's rights. They just want to sell more cigarettes. That's like if I had a whole bunch of coat hangers and put on an abortion rally. Like it's not the same, right? That's like me putting on a comedy show just to sell t-shirts. It's just not cool, cool, right? But how did that make you feel? Dirty? It made you feel disgusted? That's what Edward Bernays did. He made you feel the product. He didn't sell you the product, he made you feel the product. And that's why it doesn't surprise me that Edward Bernays is actually a nephew of Sigmund Freud. He's a nephew of Sigmund Freud. That's why every time I watch a yogurt ad, I'm like, I'm gonna fuck my, I mean, call my mom. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> look at David Bowie. When he died, what happened? Everyone that had any license to Bowie started selling you stuff. And they started selling, like, greatest hits album, a book about Bowie, here's some t-shirts, here's some shoes, or whatever the fuck. And they just put Bowie stuff and everything, and you all bought it. Because you felt the art. You felt Bowie's art. But they don't care about the art. They disguise advertising as art, and they sold it all to you. Right? And I feel that's disgusting, capitalizing on someone's death. If I die tomorrow, because we are recording this, someone's gonna have access to this footage, and they're gonna sell it for a profit. But jokes on those counts, I'm worthless. They're not gonna get a single cent out of me, right? Branding, branding, it's all about branding these days. You gotta make sure you get your brand out there. And I don't understand branding, because the word branding comes from farmers. When they used to brand their cattle, they will brand their cattle, right? And that's so they can keep track of what was theirs. And that, I understand that. But I saw this other day someone walking down the street wearing Adidas shoes, Adidas pants, Adidas shirt, Adidas jacket, Adidas backpack, Adidas hat. A hat. And I was thinking, what a cow. Like, <laughs> so I burnt them with my cigarette, you know, and, and now I own them. Uh, and the worst thing they ever created was brand loyalty. Loyalty of, to a fucking brand. How can you have loyalty to a brand? Like I was discussing with my friends that I have an Xbox, they have a PlayStation, like, pff, why do you have an Xbox? PlayStation's way better. I don't care, I just want a device that plays games. That's all it is, that's all I want. I, but they, they're, they're loyal to brand. They're like, oh, I've always been loyal to PlayStation. I've had every console since they've ever, they've ever come out. I'm loyal to PlayStation. And I can't say loyalty to a tribe. You're loyal to a tribe so they don't kill you, they protect you and all that. But being loyal to a PlayStation? Like if I was drowning in an ocean, I'm not gonna be asking for a PlayStation controller, you know? I'm not like, I've got a cheat code to get me out of this. Like, it's, that's bizarre, that's weird. And, sorry? God mode. God mode. <laughs> All right, I'll give you that one, I'll give you that one, yeah. But that's the thing, with the gaming community, that's how they trick you with branding. You're part of a community, right? They make you feel like a community. It's the gaming community. It's not really a community, because the gaming console gods, they're like, oh, we've got a new console out, it's coming out in six months. So you start saving up your money. Right, you're waiting for this new console. Then you put a pre-order down, just so you can get on day one. And then you sell your other stuff, so you can pay for this console. And you wait, and you wait, and you wait, and the console comes out, just so you can go to your friends, yeah, I got on day one. But what you're really doing is sucking that giant dick of that corporation, right? Yeah. And you're like, oh yeah, 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 they are loving it. They love it, you sucking their fucking dick, right? <laughs> they love it so much, just so they can come all over your dumb face and hear, can I have some more please? They're like, don't worry, in six months time, we'll release a slim version of it, you know? <laughs> That's all you're really doing. That's all you're really doing. Like, take Coke and Pepsi, for example. They're two giant brands. Combined net worth of $15 billion. $15 billion. And they're fighting for your loyalty. But who gives a shit about Coke and Pepsi? Why be loyal to either of them? They're both bad for your health. They also are bad for the environment. And they still don't wash out the taste of come after you suck their dicks, right? And somehow, it tastes even worse. Like, that's more about me than you guys. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, like, I was discussing my friend, like, my other friends are like, oh, I prefer Marvel over DC. I'm like, I don't care, man. I'll just watch both. We're talking about like people dressed up as heroes, funny monsters. Like, I don't give a shit. Just watch both, right? But like, if Batman came out and cured coronavirus, I'll be like, yeah, fuck Marvel, right? <laughs> but then you have that one friend's like, oh yeah, but the Incredible Hulk, he cured herpes. I'm like, just cause you have it, doesn't mean we have to go on that, right? <laughs> My friends were still arguing about the PlayStation and why it's better. And they're like, oh yeah, but PlayStation's got God of War. I'm like, I'm not spending $900 to play one fucking game. And that's when this other friend chimed in and said, oh yeah, well I got a Nintendo Switch, it's got Mario Kart and it's portable. So we've banned him from the group, you know? <laughs> Can't, gotta, stay, gotta, gotta stay positive, gotta stay positive. 
It's hard to say positive because like I try to, you know, I try to relax. I like having a shower. A shower relaxes me. But my house, the lights haven't worked for a while. And when I have to have a shower, I have to get like candles and glow sticks. And like every time I go to the store to buy a whole bunch of candles and glow sticks, they're like, are you some kind of weird emo thingy? I'm like, no, that's my shower. And I'll set up everything and I get in the shower and I like to listen to music in the shower. Do you guys like listening to music in the shower? I like to listen to a lot of 80s music when I am in, in the shower. I love listening to 80s music. So I'll set up the candles and everything. All right, I get my phone out, put Spotify on, 80s playlist. I get in the shower and then something like Devo Whippet starts. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm really enjoying this. And Spotify is like, oh, you like that song? Do you want Madonna? I'm like, yeah, sure. Madonna's great. And I starts playing, getting into it. And it's like, oh, you like Madonna? What about uh, Frankie Goes to Hollywood? Do you like that? I'm like, sure. And I start listening to that. And then Spotify is like, oh, you're gay, aren't you? <laughs> and, then I, and then it starts playing 90s gay anthems, right? And I'm trapped in the shower because I don't want to get my phone wet, wet. I'm like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, fuck, well, if I'm trying to stay positive, I might as well get into this, you know? So I pick up the glow sticks and I start going off, right? <laughs> and then when it's all done, I come out of the shower and... <laughs> I forget that I don't live alone. Now all my housemates think I'm gay. <laughs> it's really annoying. <laughs> like I said, the real estate hasn't fixed the shower and they, they also haven't fixed my stove. I've had a broken stove for six months. They won't fix it. Even the cockroaches in my place are like, dude, microwave food again, come on bro. Like, this is bad. And I don't, I don't like real estate agents, I really don't. <sighs> when I was looking for a property to live in, you know, they always lie about locations and then you go check out the inspection and it's like a shithole, looks nothing like the place you're looking at. Like, I've been in nicer crack dens, you know? Because at least their hookers were still alive, you know? Like, it's... And like, I've had like, they, they, they like dressing up, you know, their locations. They're like, oh yeah, come check out this spacious area with lots of sunlight and uh, close to all amenities and you get that, it's a fucking car park. And you're like, dude, do you want me to pay $130 a week for this car park? Well, it's Sydney, so it's like, that's a pretty good deal. So, like, but, like, and I've had real estate agents that are like, they're just bastards. Just bastards. Like, I lived in this one place for, like, about five years, all the first tenants in there, and they got really angry that we didn't steam mop the floors after an inspection. They're like, what are you doing? Like, why are the floors dirty? I'm like, it's not dirty. We just, did, we've been here for five years. Like, yeah, but you have to steam mop them. They have to be pristine. I'm like, oh, sorry, I didn't realize the queen was visiting. Right? Underneath the glorious flight path of Marrickville. Like, what the fuck? And that, uh, real estate agents, I don't, they, I don't know, there's something about them. They're just cheesy. They're just fucking annoying. I don't like them. And uh, 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 I, I looked up how hard is it to become a real estate agent. And I found out you can do a course that takes three hours. It takes five hours to be a barista. <laughs> because they train you for those extra two hours not to throw it in a realtor's face, you know? <laughs> Three hours, that's crazy. And this country is so fucking crazy with all its fucking reg rules and regulations. You need licensing for everything. You want to sell coffee? You gotta have a license for it. You want to be a realtor? You gotta have a license for it. You want to be sick? You gotta have a sick certificate for it. Like, oh, sir, so I'm feeling a bit sick. Can I go home? Well, do you have the per uh, proper credentials? No, I've been shitting in a bucket for the last hour. Well, unless you got the certificate, I can't let you go home. Please serve those Big Macs, you know? Like, like if, you wanna, if you're dead, you need a certificate. If you're dead, you need a certificate. You tell Johnson to be here Monday morning, 9 a.m., but he's dead. I haven't seen the certificate. Make sure he's here. And I have to walk him around the office and shit. That's weird. Three, three hours to become a realtor. For my real estate agent, I get a Christmas letter from them every year. They're saying, hey, Seizure, this is Dane Hodge Real Estate. Just like wishing you a Merry Christmas. By the way, we sold seven properties above market value. We also have 15 new properties on up on the market. And also we've added five more people to the team. Hope you're having a nice Christmas, Dane Hodge Real Estate. <laughs> Why the fuck are you telling me this? I'm part of the Dane Hodge family. Are you part of the Dane Hodge family? Fucking oath, mate. <laughs> Wait, do you work for them or you rent from them? I, I lived the lifestyle. <laughs> you look like a cunt. Uh, why, why are you sending me this letter? I don't give a shit. So I sent them a letter back. They said, hey, this is Seizure Kaiser. I'm still doing comedy and a lot of people talk throughout my show and won't shut the fuck up. Uh, and also, like, you know, please fix the stove. I'm afraid the cockroach is going to move out, you know? 
I don't like real estate agents, but I gotta stay positive, gotta stay positive. One thing I like to do to calm down, I like reading articles. I read a lot of articles from Australia's trusted news site, news.com.au, and I was reading this article the other day about this lady who put in an event for her daughter's seventh birthday that cost $20,000. $20,000, that's a big excessive. $20,000 for a kid's seventh birthday. And like, I've been to kids' birthdays before, not now, but when I was younger, right? <laughs> and I remember they used to give you the little lolly bags. Was each lolly bag full of cocaine or something? What the fuck? $20,000, what are you spending? What, like get the kid a jumping castle or something? Or an actual fucking castle, I don't know. $20,000, that's excessive. And this article kept on going, had the mother's name there and where she works. Right? And she put this $20,000 event and her daughter, Melina, I knew her name was Melina because her name was in lights behind her. And just standing like the little bitch she was gonna become. And like $20,000 for a kid's seventh birthday. If she's paying $20,000 for a kid's birthday, and I like putting negative energy out there. I don't like putting negative energy out there. But $20,000 for a birthday? How much is she gonna pay for a daughter's finger? <laughs> All the information is there. All the information. Melina, her mom's name, where she works, it's all there in the article. Well, why is this? Like, why is there no article about Arab guy can't afford to pay his electricity bill? Like, why is that on there? Because I'm not famous enough. But they get an article, and it annoys me. I saw this other article about this guy that stopped a bank robber, right? And how he was brave and courageous. I'm like, is he? The bank robber's way more courageous. <laughs> he had way more to lose. And he's robbing from the bank the most evil thing in the world. I, I'm like, why? Why are they doing, well, I don't care about this article. Why are they talking about the bank robber? Why are they not talking about why he did it? Right? He, so he stole $10,000, right? $10,000 to pay for his kid's birthday. You know, like $10,000. <laughs> and that's the thing, you steal $10,000, you're a criminal. You steal a billion dollars, you're a financial genius. <laughs> Right? You kill one person, you're a murderer. You kill a few people, you're a serial killer with a cool name. You kill a thousand people, you're a misunderstood dictator. You jerk off on one bus, you're a pervert. You jerk off in front of a camera, you're a sex worker. You jerk off on the bus's camera, you're an artist. <laughs> if you jerk off in front of a bunch of people, you're a comedian. Like, it's sweet. So I don't know why this article, like, I don't know why the article is there. Then I realized the news is actually more advertising. It's just more advertising. They're just advertising other things that don't relate to the actual news. It's a mixture of entertainment, information, and advertising. That's all it is. That's all the news is. And I was getting really annoyed. I was getting fucking crazy about this. And I realized that advertising's everywhere. On the streets, on your phones, on the computer screens, on your TV. They're everywhere. You're just like a bukkake of ads all the time. You can't escape. <laughs> gotta stay positive, gotta stay positive, gotta stay positive, gotta stay positive, gotta stay positive. <laughs> It's hard to stay positive, because the reason I started seeing a therapist is because I got out of a toxic relationship. I was in a toxic relationship, and she convinced me to go to a therapist, because she convinced me that I was an addict. <laughs> Weird reaction? <laughs> like, she convinced me that I was an addict. Not a cool addict, not like a drug addict or something, you know? Because if you're a drug addict, you're like, hey guys, like cocaine, who wants a party? Everyone's like, yeah. Not an alcoholic, because if I was an alcoholic, I'd be like, hey guys, who wants a round? Everyone's like, yeah. She convinced me that I was a porn addict. <laughs> I'll see you after the show. <laughs> a porn addict. Like, a porn addict can't be as fun as a drug addict or an alcoholic. Because like, so you wanna watch some porn with me? Like, it's really weird. It's creepy, right? Yeah, but like, if you're a, if you're a, let's say, if you really had an addiction with drugs, you'd be like, hey man, I'll suck your dick for some heroin. If you're an addict for porn, hey man, I'll suck your dick and can you set up a camera over there and film me and give me the link later because that's what's gonna get me off because that's not gonna really do it for me just like, like it doesn't have the same ring. <laughs> I did, like, it's a real addiction. I spent thousand dollars in therapy and it turns out I'm not a porn addict, right? This girl was controlling, right? She controlled me and convinced me I was an addict, but I'm not a porn addict. But I know a lot of people do suffer from it. And if you want to help me through this journey, you can donate to my OnlyFans. I'd really appreciate that. <laughs> but yeah, this, this relationship was really crazy. It was really crazy. Like, uh, she did convince me I was an addict and she was very controlling. Like, I'm gonna ask you guys a few questions and answer yes or no, uh, if she was controlling or not. Yes. For example, no, I haven't even asked a question yet. <laughs> like, if I didn't call her three times a day, she'd get very angry. 
right? It's like nine in the morning, four in the afternoon, nine thirty at night. If I don't call at those times, she would yell at me. Controlling yes or no? Yes. All right, cool. All right. She made me put a love heart emoji after every text. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's controlling. She won't let me fuck other women. So I don't know what the big problem was. Like, yeah. All right, but like that's the thing. Like I remember, like well, I was having an argument on the phone with her. And we're having an argument on the phone, and I was, I was walking past Newtown Station, there was a whole bunch of sniffer dogs there, and I went, walked past them, and then the cops followed me. Like, sir, why did you avoid us? I'm like, I'm oh, sorry, I'm having an argument with my girlfriend on the phone. They're like, okay, so you're gonna have to hang up the call now. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> and I heard, who is that? I'm like, it's the cops, they, uh, they, they want to search me. He's like, oh, of course you like a guy in uniform. I'm like, and they're like, sir, you're gonna have to put the phone down. I'm like, how about you talk to her? And they're like, yeah, hello, uh-huh, yep. You know, you're free to go, so just go. <laughs> And she's so controlling, she's so controlling, like, ah, oh, man, like, wait, she even controlled my diet. We started doing keto together, all right? We started doing keto because she wanted to do it. And I did keto so fucking well that I got to get my gallbladder removed in fucking two months. Like, that's true, right? But she kept cheating on the keto diet. She kept cheating on it. So I cheated on her. <laughs> Maybe my therapist's right. Maybe I am the toxic one. Uh, <laughs> It's hard, it's hard for me to be happy. It's hard for me to be happy, but I realized happiness doesn't include positivity. You can be happy without being positive. You can be positive without being happy. That's what my therapist was trying to tell me. I'm like, oh, I got it. And I realized the only time I'm happy is when I'm angry. <laughs> and I am so fucking pissed with everyone that spoke in the show. <laughs> Because I kept stumbling on my words and we're filming this. I can't give this to Netflix, maybe SBS, but I can't give it to Netflix now. And like, that's it. That's it. And, I, and, I, and I was like, you know what? I've been doing comedy 14 years. And I was being doing comedy 14 years. And a lot of people don't know me, and that's fine. All right? But I'm going to get there one day. I'm going to get there one day. And I, real, I had a realization that I'll never be as famous as Liz Chen. And you're thinking, who's Liz Chen? <laughs> Every day I go get a coffee in my area, right? And I walk up there, I go get a coffee, and I walk past this giant billboard of Liz Chen, real estate agent. <laughs> and every day I walk past it, I get annoyed. I get so fucking annoyed. Because all oh, she's got a billboard. It's been up there for seven years. Everyone knows who Liz Chen is from Stratford Partners. You know, I know everything about her. I know Liz Chen's phone number. It's 0406094321. That's her actual number. I memorized her phone number. That's why I think me and my girlfriend had a fight because I couldn't remember her number, but I remember Liz Chen's number. If I got in an accident, they'll be like, oh, is there someone we can call? Yeah, Liz Chen, 0406094321. And that's how good of a real estate agent she is. She just took real estate in my fucking mind and now it fucking annoys me. I'm like, never be as famous as Liz Chen, 0406, 094, 321, fucking shuffle partners, know everything about it. And if I ever get famous because of this bit and you walk past Liz Chen's billboard, you'd be like, oh, that's Liz Chen. That comedian does that joke about her. Not Stacey Kaiser, that comedian. And I fucking hate everything about her because she's just got a fucking billboard. She has a fucking billboard. And that's why I'm going to get a billboard. I'm going to get a giant billboard that says Stacey Kaiser. Shut up, shut up. Seizure Kaiser, I will fuck your wife. 0414333. My name's Seizure Kaiser. Good. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, shirts are now available. Make sure you get your branded t-shirt after the show. I'll see you then, bye. They call me Mr. Happy. Got a smile on my face. Oh, they call me indecisive. Cause either hell I go to waste. Um, how'd you hear about the show tonight? You invited us. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I invited some of you. Not, not Susan right here. She didn't know I'd invite her. But she's having a great time. I am now regretting all my life choices. <laughs> and, uh, over there can please be quiet, because like I said, I haven't rehearsed this fucking show and I can't remember my jokes, so yeah. That'd be really cool if you can just keep that for a sec. Uh, yeah. That's it. Yeah.
That's why, that's why uh, we don't need to be hostile. Don't need to be hostile. We don't need to be hostile. It's okay. It's okay. We're all here celebrating my demise. It's okay. Just chill. Just chill. Oh, I know, but I've got your money, so fuck you, cunt. Uh, 